Protectors, as usual, incredible guests. It seems like this may actually be the first time I had someone from the fire department on my show. Someone from the emergency responder community. I think I've had every LEO in the world, uh, every Navy SEAL, that's for sure. And uh, for now, it's awesome, man. Fire Department Chronicles in the house. Jason Patton. How's it going, brother? Ah, it's going good, man. I'm glad to hear that you finally had the heroes on here. You know, you get all the cops and then you get the fire. From- <laughs> Just you know? kidding to all my man. <laughs> hey, the man, it only took me 130 episodes, right? <laughs> that's impressive you've done that many episodes, bro. That's, that's really impressive. It's not, <laughs> even- it's not easy to put 130 episodes together, man. Uh, yeah, especially when like you throw technology in there. And, and I'm like one of those, like, you know, put the, the, the round the circle in a square box. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Me and you both. Yeah. <laughs> we linked up on social media. We, we have a lot of the same associates cause I swear, man, a lot of us just kind of gravitate towards comedy Yeah. and fire department chronicles. Yeah. I want to go into who you are in a minute, but I want to know how did you get involved with that? Did you create it? What's the deal? It's funny. We binged it. Love it. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, dark humor and all that humor in general, especially in, in you know, being a police officer, a firefighter, a military, or, you know, if you're in the healthcare field, like that, that's how we deal with stuff. You know, I've always said, like, there's two types of people, people that laugh about this stuff, or people that go like sit in corners and you worry about them. Like, you know, it's, it's it really tends to only be one of two ways. <laughs> um, but uh, we, uh, we started just messing around the the station, man. Just like it started off as National Geographic's Fire Department edition. I was, you know, Steve uh-huh. Irwin and all that stuff, and I had a good time with it. And uh, just started, you know, making videos and saw people, you know, because relatability is what it really comes down to yeah. when it comes to comedy. Like how how well can you relate to this stuff? And I think I think in general, no matter what you no matter what you do, I find cop stuff funny and cops find you know firefighter stuff funny because. In the end, it's all it all goes on that same first responder line. Yeah. Um, but I, I found out really quickly, man, that it, it was helping a lot of people mentally, which was like something that I, I never even thought of. And then it's just exploded since then. Between like short skits and memes, that is what the internet was made for. Wow. I know Al Gore, like 50 years ago when he created the uh, internet, <laughs> it was all about <laughs> memes, man. The meme war. <laughs> And the short skits. I love short skits because you know what? Everything is like just you have to get it in there quick. You nobody has, yeah. you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes anymore to just sit down and see anything. I want to watch something for a couple minutes ago. You know, that's funny, man. That is funny. Dude, something you can relate to. 100 percent Yeah. And that's what it is. You know what's funny, man, is you can find analytics and stuff on like social media and stuff. And the average watch time is three seconds. So you have three seconds to find someone's here. But yeah, I, I've noticed that my biggest, my most successful videos, you know, uh, minus maybe one of them, it's, it's less than a minute. If you can get the comedy in less than a minute, then you're yeah. good to go. Because everybody does the same thing. Something funny comes up, then you tap that screen, and if that says five minutes, you're like, next. <laughs> I mean, we have zero attention span. So yeah, fast, funny memes. I love memes. Memes are hysterical. Uh-huh. Um, and I, yeah, just, you just got to try to get it in there fast. You got to get on the Pop Smoke official, guys. I don't know if you've been on that podcast yet, mm-hmm. but that, they're like meme content creators, man. Are they? Yeah, ex Marine, awesome. ex Navy, all sorts of stuff, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll have to hook up with them. <laughs> definitely, man. Yeah, just cracking me up. <laughs> but that's the thing is like today, you know, when I'm doing interview prep, I guess look on there, I'm like, I could watch the Fire Department Chronicles all day. And you did one where you're like, you're critiquing 911, that show 911. And my yeah. daughter and I watch it, and this guy's eyes are bulging out. And it's like, oh, I love it, man. <laughs> I just did that, bro. I did it as an experiment. I did it because I, I was telling my girlfriend, like, I want to grow my YouTube a little bit more, and I yeah. want to like expand outside of what I normally do. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, this thing popped up, and I was like, yo, I got to review that, man. I got to like give the outside view of what mm-hmm. And, uh, and people loved it, man. People really loved it, dude. And I was like, that's all. Because it is hysterical how absolutely unrealistic 
most of those shows are. And I get it. You got to do it for entertainment yeah. purposes. But pushing someone's eyeballs <laughs> back in their head, never recommended. Never. <laughs> and like, hey, you know what? He's really urgent. We can't get him to the hospital. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, it was those things that was like, you know, oh, yeah, we can't go. He's way too unstable. Like, no, that is the opposite, man. Okay. Those are called load and goes, you know? Like, We're, I'm going to load that clip in here. So, audience, if you're listening or watching everything, uh, just split. Boom. You're going to watch that clip right here. But, yeah, man, it's a uh, <laughs> – you get – there's a lot. You know what? I've seen a lot of Navy SEALs have been doing that. Uh, I love Navy SEALs, man, because I'm like <laughs> – a ton of them that came on my show but it's like two navy seals watch war movies and they critique them i'm like it's the funniest shit in the world i love it it really is man because until you until you are like in that field and you have Mm -hmm. experience you never understand like how outland i mean Fast and Furious, we all know none of that stuff would have ever happened in any way, shape, or form. Everyone would have died. Yeah, but, (laughs) you know, it's like, like you, like before I had any experience in this field, but, you know, you would watch like cop shows and they're like, enhance, enhance. And they're like, zoom in 10 miles down the the road and just something like, yeah, that's about right. Like, what? (laughs) Yeah, you hit the nail on the head right there. The best scene, any movie, Super Troopers, enhance, enhance. (laughs) And as being in law enforcement, I've used that a million times. Like I'll be at my yeah. computer, people are like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Enhance, enhance." They're like, <laughs> it really is funny, man. But that's that's what I love, dude. Is especially this kind of stuff. You're able to point out the ridiculousness of it. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, uh, I was actually researching one of the episodes today, and funny enough, my girlfriend and I were like, "Holy crap, that actually happened!" Like some, not that, not yeah. the eye popping out. One where this guy falls on a. Uh, on a uh what do you call it uh what is it called pressure like a pressure gauge or something like that yeah 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 yeah. and it blows up his ass yes Uh that actually happens bro and i was like i googled it and then i was like what (laughs) i started going and like it was so funny bro because it was verbatim what they said in the show i was like oh they just pulled it from there man man. Exactly. Let's let's talk about that content. So you know those guys have like a whole writing room, and they're pulling yeah. stories like from from today. You can't make this shit up because it's real. You know, it's absolutely yeah. real. But how do you come yeah. up with your content? I mean, a lot of it is, is based on real life. We know that, especially like yeah, you know, dealing with cops yeah. and blood and everything. But how do you, I mean, how do you come up with the content? You, it's it's honest. Ninety percent of it is stuff that I deal with all the time. You know, like uh, we do the like what what do firefighters say? What paramedics say? You know, stuff like that because it's stuff I've said for fourteen mm-hmm. years. You know, um, but a lot of it is just it's experiences that I've come across, and I'm like that is ridiculous, and I need to make fun of it. You know, yeah. like the, one of my one of my favorite ones was. Um, you know, because all police officers have to be tased, they use a taser or a pepper spray, they use pepper spray. Yeah. And I'm like, what if that was, what if it was like that in the medical field? Like, what if we had to try every single drug uh, before we were allowed yeah. to give it? So I did it. And like, what if we had to get, and the defibrillation one came up because I was talking to this guy who supposedly was in the Marines. And he was like, yeah, man, in order to use a defibrillator for us, we got to defibrillate ourselves. And I was like, that's <laughs> not true. Like, there's... <laughs> No way, because everyone would be dead. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's not the way that works, bro. So like, he. Uh, but I was like, man, that would be a hysterical video, and it and it worked out. It was really, really good. So, um, yep. Oh my gosh, I, I love I love comedy, man. I you know, and the biggest thing is mental health. You and I touched a little bit about it on a pre-interview, mm-hmm. and you're a big proponent of mental health. Let's take a look at the shirt. Let's talk about it. Yep. Band, yeah, Banyan cares. So I, uh, you know, mental health is huge with first responders. We all know that first responders, military, everybody, you know, anyone mm-hmm. in the healthcare industry, it, it, it's always the, you know, our dispatchers, first responders, but they still yeah. deal with the same thing. Um, you know, it's, um, it's something that a lot of people deal with that we see, you know, and it's always that fine line because you got to be tougher than the average. So you can do what we do, mm-hmm. but you also need to understand that like, you know, your brain is like anything else. Like if, if it breaks yeah. or, or you have issues with it, you need to address it. The problem is, is that because we can't see it, you know, we're like, oh man, that's, you know, whatever, dude, you're weak, bro. You can't handle this. I always compare that to like, if, if your buddy came up to you and he's like, yo, my pancreas stopped working. I have diabetes now. I'd be like, yo, what, what, what kind of pancreas do you have, bro? Like, huh, your pancreas stopped? Like makes no sense, yeah. right? So, but that's the way we kind of approach it. So I, I found a lot of times with like, with, 
mental health, man, the biggest thing is, is, you know, the big hot keywords, the stigma, breaking stigma. the stigma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just making it so it's not so, you know, it's not such a bad word. Like mental health is not a bad word or mm -hmm. talking to your buddy is not a bad thing. Like you can address issues, but you can do it in a light manner and still at least like kind of dabble and see how bad this actually is kind of thing. Yes, um, absolutely. But, but it's always the, the biggest issue that I think we have is it's always over alcohol. It's always like, like you know, let's go get a few beers and you're like, Three beers in, and you're no longer talking about the things you should have been talking about. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or you drink too much, and you're like, I love you, man, but you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you end up in his bed, and it's just, wow, what just It's weird. Happened? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> and as soon as you said that, I just looked at him like, you end up in his bed, and I'm looking at this big ass bottle breacher on my desk, and I'm like, what well, happens next? That's kind of weird. I don't know. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what is Banyan Cares? Is that I want to know more about that organization. So it's Banyan Treatment Centers is the name of it, and okay. uh, Banyan Treatment Centers they have uh, twelve or uh, eleven or twelve, depending. Uh, we're about to open up one, um, but uh, eleven facilities across the United States. And what's great about them, the reason I started working with them was you know I have a national platform or a worldwide platform depending yeah. on where you're at. And um, I wanted to be able to give people a name to look to if they had problems. And it wasn't like, uh, you know, is that place good? Is it not? Because the one thing I've always said is it's already hard enough for first responders to even mm -hmm. admit they have a problem. And then to go to their departments and their departments are like, well, we don't know what to do. And if they even know what to do, like yeah. they don't know where to send people. They're like, uh, I, do I send you to Mike's, you know, Mike's first responder shack down the street? Or are they just, you know, know. Bags, that kind of thing? So. Um, I were started working with them because their reputation has been incredible. So we developed something called crew. Um, it's a treatment for first responders specific. It, it works for any kind of traumas, but it works mm -hmm. very well for first responders, you know, the modality CBD and DBT, that kind of thing. And then yeah. EMDR, depending on how bad it is. So yeah, it's now, awesome. I definitely want to look into it. I'm going to post a little bit, something about it in the video here. So everybody yep. take a look, follow them. Um, the other thing is we do need and you know you it's hard to do this stuff internal because then it's like well if you were if you go and you talk to a chaplain and not that i shouldn't say the chaplain because that's confidential but let's say you talk to one of your managers and say hey i'm all fucked up and blah blah, blah yeah. and they take you off the street but if they send you if you can go to someone like like banning and yeah they can keep it confidential you could just vent stress and i tell people all the time you may go and see a therapist that one particular one might suck but there's always another one it might take you five different trips. Go there yes. for 20, 30 minutes, find the right one, yeah. man. The therapist I had for years, man, she, we talked about zombies and killing and all sorts <laughs> of shit. And it was great, man. It, dude, it's awesome. Therapy is so great, bro. And I think mm -hmm. that's what so many people have like, uh, I had a, a girl that I dated. She said that um, marriage counselors don't work. And I said, why? She said, because everyone who goes to marriage counseling gets a divorce. I said, what are those people going to marriage counseling? Like, yeah. They're already screwing the neighbors. And they're like, let's get uh -huh. the divorce <laughs> That's like, uh, <laughs> it's like all those stars. It's like, he got, he got, he got his dick in someone and they're like, he's got a sex addiction. Yeah. He's, he's at the sex, <laughs> yeah. the sex, like, the sex club for a month and a half <laughs> trying to cure his addiction. It's like, yeah, no, but, but I think, no, I just, I think in general, like a lot of people, they, they look at therapy as such a negative thing, bro. Nothing feels better than going in, like, go, you're like feeling shitty about some stuff. You don't know what to do. You yeah. go into a therapist. And like you said, it takes time, but you find a good person. You go sit down and even that maybe it's literally an hour of you just, bah, 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 just mm -hmm. getting it all up your chest. Man, you leave out of there. You're like, God, that feels so much better. I yes. know I'm not judged. You know, I'm not judged. I don't, yeah. I know this is good. Maybe they give you some some things that you can do to help work, you know, some exercises, stuff like that. But yeah, with man, the right bro. therapist, the right one, every single time you come out of there, every single time yep. you got one iota of something new because yep. you don't get it like with your friends and everything. Cause you gotta remember your friends are typically the same as you, you know, they talk the same shit. You are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're the same and everybody around doesn't, they know you, but when you go to someone yep. new and they, they look at you, oh, that's what your problem is. Yeah. It's not even always a problem. It's just, Something that's just irking you. Bro, have you ever like, I don't know how much mechanical knowledge you have, but like, you know, sometimes there's literally, you know, you have, you know, gears and stuff working. And I, I've been, when I worked on cars, man, you have multiple gears mm -hmm. lining up. And sometimes one of them pulls out just slightly, yeah. just a little bit. 
and it's enough to bind up the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And literally, it's something very minute, and you just push that Ugh. thing back in, and you're right back in it, you know? A bell and comes off, and it's squeaking all the time. That's the squeaking in your brain, bro. 100%, man. And all the time, we're always like, oh, it's definitely this, when it could be something completely different. I had a, a therapist when I was talking to you one time, I was having a massive problem, bro. I was suicidal. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. And I went through this entire session with this lady. And at the very end of it, she's like, yo, have you ever thought that maybe you maybe think of this a little bit incorrectly and maybe you should actually like accept this and look at this? And I was like, mm -hmm. holy shit, yep. dude, I was, that was it. I was good to go, man. I was like, huh, <laughs> you know? Sometimes it's that simple. You know what I do want to key off of right there is you mentioned that you were suicidal. You know how long, how, like years ago, not even years ago, like not that long ago, if you mention that on the air, it's like your life is over. Yeah. Like me, now that I hit my 20, I'm like, you know, my first time I ever talked about my own issues with it was with, uh, with Deputy Hookham the other day. It's the first time I ever really came out and talked about wow. it. Now I'm like, I got my 20, screw you. I'll, I'm going to talk about it all day long if I want to. Yeah. And, and that's a big thing with yeah. Leo's. Yeah. yeah, it's a big thing with Leo's because it's something I never thought about with Leo's, but like, you know, they take your gun, bro. Like, yeah. oh no, you can't, no, oh, you, you can't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, taking your gun. Yep. Like, and that, I can't imagine that, man. I couldn't imagine someone being like, mm -hmm. uh, me going and be like, dude, I, you know, I, I really don't feel good, man. I feel suicidal. And then being like, you're off the truck, Jason, that's it, bro. Yep. I'm sorry, you're, you're, uh, you're over there now. I'll be like, well, fuck, no, I'm fine, man. I'm good. Like, I don't know. Like, what are you talking about? So, take away your livelihood, man. I've had one of these things, I have one of these things on me for you know 20 years now and it's like and for you listeners that's a bad idea it showed up but the thing is like you know i'm at the point though but it, it's taken me over 20 years to be able to actually talk about anything what that's about crazy. the guy this guy or girl that's been on a job for six seven years and has just really hit that wall and i can't talk to anybody about it and you know what's you know what what's jacked up with like um supervisors or chiefs people that are higher up at admin that kind of thing they mm -hmm. look at them as a liability and it's yeah like why don't we look at them as the opposite? So you got a guy who's mentally jacked up, right? He's seen mm -hmm. way too many things. Now he's so mentally uh, frozen, you know, he's yep. so mentally like, uh, you know, looking the other way, that kind of thing, distracted, that when he shows up, he's useless or she's useless. Like she's, yep. they're doing the bare minimum, that kind of thing. If you just invested I know. a little bit of time into them, they'll become that great employee again. The know? problem is, and we all know this, and if you're a manager out there, maybe you should self-reflect because um, there's a difference between a manager and a leader is that they would rather replace them and they don't yeah. understand. They do not understand that when I was a special agent, it took me years to figure out what the hell I'm doing. I shouldn't say years to figure out what I'm doing, but it takes a while to understand what the hell you're doing and you can't yeah. just replace that because what if that next person you get, and I was, here's the analogy I always give. If, if there's 10 people, three are hard workers, two are absolutely great supporters Two are kind of hanging out and, and the other, the rest are just worthless. What if yeah. you get a worthless one to replace them? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've already invested a ton of time into that yeah. person. They understand the biz. They understand the, in, the ins mm -hmm. and outs of everything. around. There is them. a reason they're burnt out is because they are nine times out of 10. They are proactive. Yeah. Busting their ass doing what they got to yep. do to get the job done and to support their fellow brothers and sisters. Nine yes. times out of 10. A hundred, yeah. The, the hard workers are normally the ones that get burnt out real fast because they're mm -hmm. hard chargers. They're trying to do the right thing, that kind of stuff. The guy who just walks and listen, <laughs> I sometimes I, you know, we've all been those people at some point. Yeah. Or at least I am. Uh, but you know, it's it's hard, man, because especially with the mental health, man. Like mm -hmm. I even find myself doing this because it's so it's so ingrained in my brain. I've had to try. Somebody they're like, oh man, you know this, that, or that happened. I'm like, come on. Like I see someone crying on camera. I'm like, come on. And then I'm like, oh, sh no, no, that's not the right way to Don't think about this. Like, Don't be a dick. <laughs> Don't be a dick. You know, <laughs> you know and it, it takes time, man. It's a culture that's been just beaten into our brains. Uh -huh. But if we can slowly change it in ourselves, even if it's just a little bit over time, then yep. we'll be good to go. I love Absolutely. it, man. Well, I know you got, yeah. you're a busy man, busy, 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 but I do want to talk about coffee. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it, man. Let's hear about the company. And there's one thing so, I really uh, want to talk about when you when you tell me, come on. <laughs> Fire Department Coffee, man. We uh, started it about three, just over three years ago. It's uh, it's owned and run by firefighters. Uh, we uh, give back 10% of all net proceeds to sick and injured first responders. So it doesn't have to be just, they could be any first responder. Awesome. Uh, but we wanted to create a company that genuinely made good coffee, good high-end coffee. Uh, if you're 
you know, a first responder, we give you guys discounts. It's uh, 50, essentially 50% off what our, what our uh, online sales wow. are, our online prices are. Yeah, man, we try to take care of our own. And then we, we give back 10% of that. We find guys who like can't pay their mortgage for the month. And, you know, mm-hmm. we, we t- maybe take care of the mortgage for the month or, or whatever it is. But the big thing, man, high quality coffee, it's, it's run by first responders. So we get oh, it, dude. We get what coffee, it's like, man. you know? Uh, yeah. That's, let's that's let's talk reason. about the best coffee. part of this. And I, you know, I'm, I'm perusing through the website and I see alcohol infused yeah. coffee. <laughs> yeah. And then you have yeah, rum but- infused. I am like, I am an absolute rum fanatic. I love rum. Uh, <laughs> what's up with that, man? It's the first alcohol infused coffee I've seen on the market. It's dude, it's awesome, bro. It like you get the you get all the good things from you know you get the nice taste of of alcohol. Mm-hmm. So we infuse it into the green beans themselves. Yeah. Then when we roast it, it roasts off the the alcohol itself, so you can actually drink it at work, and you you're not gonna oh, get yeah, fired that kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you you retain the 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 flavor of it and the aroma, so it's not flavored. Uh, yeah. Then you actually infuse these beans, man. And yeah. I tell you, it's. It like my favorite Irish whiskey, Egan's Irish whiskey is, is what we infuse our Irish whiskey with, and it's so good, man. That and uh, bourbon are my two favorites. So, don't you have to be really Irish man. to be a fireman? I don't know. I, don't know. I, uh, I mean, I, I qualify, so we're yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, um, we're gonna have you on again. I'd love to have I appreciate you, and, it, man. you, and we'll do a round table. We're gonna, we'll get an LEO on here, and we'll, we'll bust everybody's balls. Let's do it, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot for coming on, dude. Thank you so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man.